So this week I'm finishing up what I left off last week, and that's finishing up the concrete work and the block on the open part of my shop so I can get ready to start framing. I gotta get this concrete work done. So me and Elizabeth were off to get some cement and a few other supplies as well. bad when you have to put plastic over what you keep inside to keep it from getting wet. I can't wait to get a roof on this place. These bags of cement are 90 pounds a piece. What is it? 42 kilos? Quite heavy. So over the last, I don't know, two months, me and this old concrete mixture have become quite familiar with each other. I have shoveled tons of sand and stone into this thing. It's been a real good mixture. Got the perfect weight, in my opinion. Not too big where you can't move it around, but it's definitely not a lightweight mixture. The actual business end of this thing is pretty, pretty industrial, really. Nothing like the junk they're passing for concrete mixtures at these box stores and stuff. I'm not exactly for sure with the age of this unit, but it's well older than I am. Probably twice as old as I am, to be honest. You know, back, they were built back when you, know, you bought bought it once. I'm sure it wasn't a cheap mixer, but the people who built this mixer intended it to last a lifetime, and probably you know, your offspring's lifetime as well, if it was looked after at all. So I'm making my final push to fill up all these blocks with concrete. I'm almost done. I got like eight cells to go. But that's so hot. And I'll tell you, I underestimated just how much concrete it would take and how many mixes it would take with this mixer in order to fill up these walls, right? Um, by hand. If I would have been a smarter guy, I would have worked my order of operations in a way to where I could have done the vast majority of it with a truck and then finished up the small spots by hand. That's what I would have done. Hindsight 2020, right? So this is about three quarters of a bucket full of concrete. I think everybody should experience the weight of a full five-gallon bucket full of concrete uh, once in the bike. And this cell is empty all the way to the bottom. And it'll take almost three of these to fill it up. So that's a lot of concrete mixing for this wall in the ends, more than really a person should do. Thank <laughs> you. 
So this is the dam that I made in order to keep that flowable fill material from pouring out of this hole down and around the shop so I could get the level up in the shop where I wanted it. It did its job. Uh, that stuff would have floated out, flowed out, would have floated. <laughs> it would have flowed out uh, had I not made this. So I'm just going to dump what's left of my concrete in here. I mean, it'll just be a permanent dam. safe to say I think there'll be no stair step cracking in this wall. Completely full of concrete and man it took a bunch of it. Um, a lot more than you'd think. A lot more than I thought, that's for sure. Um, but it's done. All my concrete anchors are in and now I can put my woodwork on here. It's good. One step closer. is basically 14 feet long by 11 inches, 11 and a half inches wide by 2 inches thick. That's a heck of a piece of lumber there. Wow, is it raining? Oh, it's probably just the tears of the people who are crying because I'm about to cut this board. <laughs> I'm just joking. I do need to cut it down to size though. Uh, about 8 and an eighth wide. So before I do any roof work on the shop, I'm going to have to do some house cleaning. You know, mentioned last week me and these guys don't get along at all, and it's been pretty hot the last couple weeks. And the hotter it gets, the more aggravated these guys seem to seem to get, especially if you get anywhere around their nests. My son was out in the yard last week and one got him on the finger, you know, despite their size. They pack a pretty good sting, really.
I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim that in back a little bit. Get it room to expand. Thank you. Yes, I'll help you. Are you open? You need a trim? You need a trim now. How's that look? Mm -hmm. Good. It'll work. So I believe that now I can set this down right in this corner anyway, take some of the pressure off of these two supports here and kind of let the wall support, uh, you know, at least this section of the building. And then I'm going to go across with my laser and check the opening here and make sure that I'm somewhat level all the way across through here. So way when I go to frame, you know, I know what I'm dealing with anyway. It's not going to be perfect, but it should be good. I mean, this, this support here is not even needed anymore. I mean, these two trusses and that end plate are all now supported by this block wall. So I can take that out, actually. Chloe, did you make a nest in my sand? Or a bed? Oh, look what we have here. So fast. <laughs> Itsy sounds like she's dying over there. So that looks really good. I like that. And that'll hold up. I mean, I guarantee it'll hold up until it fails. Let's do the ends because I got to do those as well. So it's time to mount the vertical pieces of lumber that I have on the inside of this opening. And I'm going to be doing that in just a slightly different, well, totally different manner than what I did these. We wet setted these anchors, poured concrete in the, uh, in the cell, and then stuck the concrete anchor into the wet concrete. And then when it dried, it was obviously captive. Well, these are a little different. Let me bring you in. I'll show you the anchors we're going to use, and we'll mount this boards. So here's a look at these concrete anchors. Pretty neat the way that they work. Four cuts on each one that allows the back end of the wedge here to expand. And it expands because this is a tapered pin and inside of the bore of this anchor is a matching taper. 
And once you drill the hole in the concrete, you insert this in. They make a tool for this, but a punch works just as well. And once it's in there and bottomed out, you can drive this in the hole. It expands these little, uh, these little tines, I guess. They're not tines, but little legs. And it just locks it in the hole. That being such a shallow taper on this pin, I'm sure it is a locking taper. So it makes it where they won't come out. You don't have a lot of a thread engagement with these, but uh, they work really well. I've used them quite often in the past on several projects. Let's uh, drill some holes and set some anchors. So just stick the anchor in the hole there and I wanted the anchor to be back inside I want it to be actually holding inside the concrete that's in these blocks and not trying to expand actually in the block itself so just take a punch and hit that little wedge that's in there and that's it won't come out now So I hope this isn't a pattern starting here. It wasn't two weeks ago that I replaced the starter on this little car. We've got a problem here, I'll share it with you, but Elizabeth was noticing when she would turn her steering wheel that she'd get some belt squeak from the power steering pump. And she had me look at it, which is a good thing. <laughs> Let me show you what's happening. It's a common failure, but one that could leave you on the side of the road potentially. Let me get you a shot down in here. You can see that belt that runs on the alternator there almost completely shredded off. I don't see how it was, I don't see how it stayed on there, but it did. Anyway, this car has two belts, so it's not complete failure when one breaks, but still, without an alternator, you'll soon be stuck on the side of the road. So that's got to be changed. Usually, alternator you have three bolts one main captive pivot bolt one adjusting uh, pinch bolt and then one adjuster screw that's almost every vehicle we have here other than my old truck is that way so every bolt on this 12 millimeter Makes it kind of easy, I guess. Easier, anyway. There we go. Gonna pivot that alternator up to get it off of there. They don't give you much room over here.
Hmm. I'm pulling off the shoelace. It's broken up so much. There's a new one. There's what's left of the old one. The two strands left. They're barely hanging on. It's all cracked up anyway. And there's the new one. It's a Continental. Hopefully they gave us the right one. Yeah, I think so. Alright, on with the new one. Snake it down through there. There's a slot between the frame rail and the front of the motor wide enough to get just wide enough to get the belt through. And there's still a piece of belt stuck on there. Oh, I got it. All the way on there. Huh. You can do it from the top. All right, Mama, will you start this car up before I lock before I lock everything down? Let this belt run for a minute, and then I'll tighten down all the all the good stuff. Like that for a day or two it should be tight enough now and I'll check it let's recheck that later but it should be good will not pull that out so I'll just cut off that excess so for now all I've got is three anchors in this these last two will have to be wet set because this wall or this cell here is only full with concrete up to here and then there's a piece of rebar shoved down in it so when I do fill it the rest of the way it connects the two the reason why I couldn't fill this up completely is obviously there's a roof sitting on top of it I can't get to the top of that seal plate to drill a hole into it until the roof's off, the tin roof, right? I'm going to be replacing it. So once the tin roof's off, I can access the top, drill, I think, a two-inch hole, is what my plans are, and then fill that the rest of the way with concrete, and then they'll have some wet set anchors here, and then I'll tighten those up. And that will allow me to connect the roof to the wall. I've got each one marked, each one has a piece of rebar where I stopped the pour, and so they're all connected. But it complicates things when you do you know, repair work like this and build the building backwards. But that's my plan. That's the way I intend to do it anyway. So I picked up a new, but nowhere, well, new to me, nowhere near new, really, cabinet for the shop. I'm soon going to have somewhere to put this. Even though I'm not ready, when this stuff comes available, you better jump on it quicker. Somebody else will, because good cabinets are crazy expensive. Let me show you what I got. It's kind of ugly, but it should work nice. Let me show you. Pretty neat really. Well, is that not going to open? There we go. She's not the prettiest ever. But it'll hold tools. already scuffed to pieces so I'm not hurting anything. <laughs> it's not already scuffed up anyway.
good cleaning. Maybe straightening out a few bent places, and this will be a nice cabinet. Oh god, it's heavy. She was already scuffed all the pieces, but you know, I'll clean it up a bit, set it in the corner. It won't make no difference. Let me show you the front of it. So its color matches my truck. Oh, this will clean up. These just fold up, slide in. It's like a filing cabinet, I guess. It's lockable. Go ahead and get a key with it. Got all the doors open and closed good. T-A-B is the brand name. Be good for fixtures and tooling. So here's some damage to this building that I'm going to have to address. The chimney itself is going to have to come down. You can see the block. I'll get you a closer shot in a second, but you can see the block work. I don't know why that's eaten up like that, but it is. So the chimney's going to have to come down. It's got rot behind the chimney to the paneling and to the truss, this most outer truss that's right behind that paneling, and possibly the seal plate. So all that's going to have to be repaired before I can get a roof on this place. So let me get you a closer shot of that. I'm also going to have to replace that, I guess you'd call it a fascia board, I'm not for sure, two before on end right below the tin. The wood bees have gotten in that really bad and chewed it all to pieces, but let me show you this. And uh, we're going to have to tear this out soon. So the damage to this chimney is pretty extensive. I mean, you can see how the blocks are eating up there from the water getting on them, and it probably freezing and thawing, just in maybe poor quality block. You can also see this sheeting here is uh, rotted into, along with the truss behind it. It's got some rot in it. So, until I can know exactly how bad it is, or I can't know until I get this chimney out of the way, get that siding cut back, you know, you can't put a roof on a building like that with a chimney like this on it. It'd just be a waste of time. So this has to be repaired first. bed. This is some stuff that I poured down in here, right here, uh, before I did this part here. So, it'll work. I'll be there from now on. So bear with me. The audio in this video I know is going to be all over the place. This is actually the third different mic that I've used in this one video. I'm just trying to see what works best with my setup. Right now we're using a road it's a road video link. It's a wireless lavalier mic. I've got it moved way down here because it just is so aggressive. It even turned all the way down as far as the mic itself. I can't adjust the audio volumes in my camera. I can't adjust the amp on it until I get an upgrade. So I have to just test and see what works. But I need to get a camera anyway. That would be down the road. So just trying to improve the audio. It's behind the scenes stuff. I need to work on these windows as well, but this is not a window at all. It's actually a sliding glass door that I would like to turn into a window. I'm not going to frame this wall up solid. I'd really love to get some natural light in here, and I'd like some big pieces of glass. And I've got two of these. It's like six foot six by three foot seven. So it's a big piece, double insulated. So two pieces of glass, oxygen free environment in between, or vacuumed, or argon filled. There's a couple different things that they that they do to make them to where heat doesn't transfer through them well, at least that's my best understanding. So they're somewhat energy efficient, right? Usually if this was a single pane, it would be tough to, you know, if you had a bunch of them, it would be tough to heat a building like that. So it's definitely a nice 
piece of glass that I'd like to use. This wall with two of these in it, maybe a couple small windows on the ends, that'd be nice and I'd like to make that happen. But first I need to address what I'm going to do as far as the frames on these. Right now they're wooden framed, vinyl coated, it's coming apart down there in this corner. The frames need pulled off of these. I may potentially be able to use uh, the wooden part. I'm not for sure. The vinyl's breaking up, so it's got to come off. And they have to be sealed as well. So I'm going to have to pull them apart, get a look at them, see what we're working with, see what it's going to take to turn these doors into windows. Maybe. Cut it off without, without breaking the glass. Alright guys, that's it this week wall completely full of concrete which was a massive job and I'm pretty much done with concrete other than the tops which you know, the roof's got to come off before I can finish those. Perimeter of my opening is all covered in wood which really makes this ready to be framed actually. I can start to start on that but I really need to make my final decisions on what I'm going to do with the windows. And I keep debating back and forth in my mind what to do uh, whether I make these stationary non-opening windows or whether I make them to where they swing open. Now, each one has benefits and drawbacks. Uh, the main drawback to them opening is that it will take an extra week, probably, given my schedule anyway, uh, to make that happen. And, uh, you know, I don't know if that, that's really worth it, considering I want to get this closed in uh, before winter, because it won't be long. We're towards the end of summer. And the main benefit to these windows anyway will be the light input and the view. And then I'll probably put some extra windows at the ends, some smaller type, regular type windows, uh, just for that extra ventilation if I do decide to go with these stationary, which I have not decided yet. But, the, you know, these are just the thoughts that are going through my mind. But these are like 50 or 70 pounds, 50 to 70 pounds, that's a guess. But they're definitely... They're definitely heavy, so it complicates things to make them open. So we'll see. You know, I'm not set on anything yet. But that's it. Got to get this chimney down before this roof can be done as well. So there's tons, tons to do. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who supported me on this project. It's definitely been an adventure that I won't forget. So that's it. Send me an email if you need anything. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Look what we got over here. Peanut. Stopping by for her nightly snack.